Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today got a Fire Minion build for you, and this is going to be a very powerful Fire Minion build. This thing can go in Corruption 300 plus. It's very powerful. It does tons of damage. It kind of scales out as you get to that 300 Corruption, but your minions have pretty good survivability. You don't have to resummon them very often. The only ones that die are the Fire Archers, the Golem. He survives and takes a tank for a very long time unless he sits in dots for a long period of time. Your mages are basically getting all of their health back every time they do a critical strike chance. So they have a ton of attack speed, and we're going to be taking advantage of some uniques that are in the game that give a bunch of plus levels like the Riven, Raven's Rise that give plus two levels as gloves, and then Lugi's Hunger as the amulet that gives plus two to minions as well. So you get four levels for any spell fire minion right off the bat. So we got fire archers, fire mages, and your fire golem that all get plus four levels to them. And we have zombies that are fire as well, although they're not a spell, but they get some additional levels as well, which really allows you to just stack a bunch of nodes that you can't normally do with all of these skills, allowing them to synergize together and with the Dragon Flame Edict two-handed staff for the minion fire damage that they get. They do a ton of damage, and it's very endgame viable. We're running it as a low-life build so that you don't have to worry about, you know, doing hits yourself to leech a bunch of life. You're using zombies to get a bunch of ward, and it allows you to push really far, and it's actually pretty fast-paced as well. You can actually clear pretty decently through the Echoes, even at 300 corrupt we were still killing things basically when we got to them so it allowed us to keep going through obviously you go a little slower for the high health rares or depending on what mods you're stacking when you give them too much health or way too much damage things can get a little dicey but overall it goes very very well now just the disclaimer this is not on my account this is separate from the account that i've created so just so you know this is not my build but i am showcasing it for youtube so let's go ahead and get into it For skills, I'm running Summon a Skeleton Mage, Summon Skeleton, Summon Volatile Zombie, Summon Bone Golem, and Dreadshade. Now there are more points here than what it looks like, and that's due to the fact that we get a plus two levels to some of these that aren't shown here. For instance, the Summon Skeletons get plus two for being fire, same with the Golems. A lot of that's not shown here. We also get plus two for the Summon Skeleton Mage for being fire, so some of the unique items attached in the build pointer aren't being shown but there is 26 points here. So we've got four points in Splinter Dominion, three points in Argonautic Speed, two points in Ossian Frenzy, we've got five points in Cellar Mortis, one point in Leech Life, five points in Gravetide, three points in Grey Merchant, one point in Pryomancers, and one point in Inferno, with one point in Order of Death to have a plus one maximum mage. Now, how we have this set up is we have, obviously, the fire mages, the Pryomancers, and then we have it set up, we want as much attack speed, extra projectiles, and we want them to leech. So, big thing, we have 100% crit chance for them because we have 15% base here, then we have some more base both on the helm and on our idols, and then they have a lot of increase. It only takes a couple hundred percent increase to get them to a point where they have 100% crit. So they're always critting, and then the interaction is they get 15% of their maximum health healed every time they do a crit. So every second when they're attacking, they're getting 15% of their health healed. So we just want to stack a lot of maximum health for them, and that's going to allow them to keep themselves at full health because it's always being healed because they're attacking very, very fast, especially with Dreadshade on them. The four points in Splinter Dominion gives extra projectile chance. It's 100% effect, so there will be three fireballs every time that they fire instead of one, which makes it really nice to clear AoE. Then we have the extra attack speed, and the two points in Ossian Frenzy gives them a Frenzy chance, which gives them another 20% increased cast speed, and they have a 20% chance on every hit they do on an enemy for that to proc, so they're just firing really, really fast. And then obviously the five points in Grave Tide for that adaptive spell damage is really huge. For Summon Skeleton, we have five points in Sweeping Strikes, two points in Unbound Necromancy, one point in Gravewalkers, one point in Marrow Tap, five points in Necrotic Conviction, one point in Hollow Walkers, four points in Unholy Rage, one point in Fire Arrow. You can switch some points around if you want multi shot so that they fire additional arrows. This won't make them do it any faster, but if you get cooldown for them, you could. One point in Lone Guardian, and one point in Mightier Than the Sword. For Summon Volatile Zombies, we have these set up for damage, and so that they're the fire type, and so they give us ward when they explode. They'll also do extra damage against rare and bosses. 
We've got two points in Fervor, one point in Leap Attack, five points in Path of Destruction, two points in Necromantic Fervor, one point in Vital Ward, so we'll get all that ward every time they explode based on how much life they have, four points in Army of Rot, one point in Flammable Vital. This gives the physical and poison base damage, turns it all into fire, and any poison chance you have becomes Ignite Chance. Then we got two points in Forceful Commander, one point in Daunting Blast, two points in Ravenous, so you have 60% more hit damage against bosses and rares, and it makes them hit decently hard, but they're also giving you ward, and we didn't go with any points in the Giant Zombie because we want to be able to just spam them whenever we do have mana. And the last three points is Engrave Attunement, which gives them more damage. They do decay health and have reduced speed, but that's why we gave them a point in the leap, so they can just leap to the enemy that they need to go to. You're usually spamming right on top of the enemies anyway. Then for Summon Bone Golem, we have this set up for a big fire aura, and that also converts him to fire, so that he'll get the plus two levels for being a fire minion. We got one point in Algum of Rogues, five points in Charged Bones, one point in Pryor Golem, two points in World Pyre, four points in Unnatural Speed, five points in Amalgam of Sentinels, and four points in Tower of Bones so that he has increased size and threat generated, so a lot of the enemies will go for him instead of us. His life will start to fall over time, especially in the higher corruption as he starts to die. Go ahead and just resummon him whenever he's about to die, and boom, he's back to full life. And then for Dreadshade, we just have this set up to not decay, so it will not decay the life of the minion that's on, but it will give them attack speed and increased damage, which is really nice. It's also going to give them some added necrotic damage. We got four points in Lingering Doom, two points in Spectral Presence, one point in Lone Watcher. This is what makes it not drain the life of whatever it's on anymore. Three points in Dying Coven, four points in Grim Fate, so there's 100% increased area, damage, they get 60% more damage when they are inside of that aura. One point in Symbiotic Apparition, so it affects ourselves as well as allies or whoever has Dreadshade on them. Everything else inside the circle will be affected by it. We would have put more points in the area, but the area seems bugged. It doesn't seem to get any bigger. And three points in Flesh Harvest, so that there's increased buff effects from this tree for every 3% of missing life. So as their life goes down, whichever one you have Dreadshade on, the effects of the entire tree, the attack speed, the damage increase affects all the allies and the minion who cast it on it themselves so as their life goes down they do more damage and they have faster attack speed which makes it a little bit crazy for passives we've got two points in stolen vitality five points in dark rituals eight points in forbidden knowledge one point in mania of mortality and five points on unnatural preservation wanted to get the necrotic and poison resist and as much other resist as we could from the passive trees now not all the quests have been unlocked there are three additional points if you've done quests that you can put points where you would like we have 10 points in the lich all 10 points in apocrypha for that int and mana regen which helps you spam more of the zombies and then 79 points in the necromancer with eight points in risen army three points in cursed blood one point in Blood Armor, 10 points in Mortal Tether, 4 points in Aegis Fall, 1 point in Unbound Necromancy, 8 points in Tyrant, 2 points in Cling to Life, 1 point in Tyrant's Legion, 10 points in Moonlight Prior, 5 points in Frantic Summons, 5 points in River of Bones, 10 points in Hearsay, 10 points in Rite of Undeath, and 1 point in Disciples of Necromancy. And then for gear, idols, uniques, blessings, all that stuff... The main interactions that we're working around is we've had the Dragon Flame Edict for a while. That's something that we've done fire minions with a lot, and it gives them a huge increased fire damage, allowing them to do lots of damage. We're also going low life, so we have Enzanguius and Last Steps of the Living. But then the two uniques that we tied in this were the Raven's Rise, which gives plus two levels to all spell minions, which is going to be your your summon skeleton mages now you don't have to wear these they just give two more levels to the mages so we can put a couple more points in their attack speed you can go with something else but the one we are really basing this around is low guys hunger and this gives plus two to fire minion level skills which gives plus two to the zombies to the golem to your fire archers and to your fire mages so all four of your minion skills get plus two levels with just this one amulet making it better in my opinion than the death rattle especially since the death rattle will make them take increased damage this will give the minion critical strike chance gives them those plus two levels and just makes it so that they're really really powerful offensively 
For the rest of the gear for the helm, go with skeleton or mages, your minions, skeletons, and skeleton mages. Critical strike chance increase, both base and increased chance overall. And then go with the flat health and increased health for the belt. Go with some minion health regen, really going to help with their survivability just a little bit. This is the only spot for minion health regen on the build. You can put it on the helm instead of the flat a base crit chance for the minions if you want just to improve their survivability but they survive quite well and the mages rarely rarely die because they're healing so much of their health you're almost better off just putting increased minion health on there just so they can heal more and then it's just the fire archers you have to worry about because they don't get that same amount of health healed every time they do a hit for the rings we have the turquoise rings on for the minion damage minion health minion critical strike multiplier we also have increased minion damage and health on them we got elemental resistant health on the right and on the left. We got critical strike avoidance and health along with the same minion damage and increased minion health. And then for the relic, plus two levels to skeleton mage. Again, not needed for this build to take off. But if you have it, two more levels. It's nice if you have an exalted one with plus three or plus four. Also very nice and makes up for taking off the gloves and being able to put anything else there that you want, including more health and other resistance and even more minion health and damage if you want. This also has health and elemental resist on it. And there's nothing that you need for blessings. I recommend, though, on the Reign of the Dragons, get the you want to get the highest level blessing for critical strike avoidance as you can get. As with so many uniques on the build, it's going to be hard to get to 100% critical strike avoidance so the empowered blessing for csa is going to be one of the things you definitely want but outside of that you can get anything that you want everywhere else and then for the idols you want that base critical strike chance for skeletons you can also get physical resist and necrotic resist as suffixes and then in the two by two boxes that you'll have room for some one by twos go with the hybrid health you want as much health as possible so that you're generating as much ward as possible since this is a low life build All right, and then for just how to play the build, so you summon all of them, you'll have your five summon mages, you'll have your eight summon skeleton archers, and they'll be fire archers, and then you'll have your fire golem, and then as you get your zombies out, you will go ahead and have fire zombies as well, as you can see here. Everything is all fire, you can throw on a dread shade, and when you attack, you can see that it's just some massive damage going on. Now, they're not huge hits, you're doing between 10 and 20k damage, but what it is allowing to happen is, as you can see here, you have some crazy attack speed, everything's going to have great survivability, and there's a lot of projectiles, which allows you to clear maps really quickly, and just kind of keep progressing forward through it. For leveling this build, I recommend just using the skills as they are. It comes together early, you can build straight into it. It's no different than doing the ice ranged minions with zombies leveling up. It's almost the exact same guide, except that you're choosing to go fire instead. It's still going to have great damage, still going to have lots of minions, and I'll be leveling up a necromancer soon in which we build towards this as we already have found the amulet needed for this as well as the staff. We don't have the gloves yet, but it's easily doable without those gloves, so that's what we'll work towards in our next stream. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this leveling guide. I hope you enjoyed it in the description below. Don't forget there are timestamps for anything that you need. There's also a link to the written guide if you'd like to see that. And there's also a list of uniques that are both involved here and that you could use instead if you would like. Alright, let's go ahead and enjoy some gameplay. As always, stay safe and have a good one.